morning from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It is Tuesday, December 18th, just about 6.20 a.m. here on the West Coast and 9.20 a.m. local time in Florida. Welcome to this morning's launch of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 1 satellite for the U.S. Air Force. You're currently looking at a live view of that Falcon 9 at Space Launch Complex 40 as it awaits its 9.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Tom Perdario and I'm a firmware engineer here at SpaceX. Today's payload is uh, likely a familiar one. It is the Global Positioning System Satellite, or GPS. Uh, if you've ever navigated somewhere in your car or used your smartphone, uh, you have used these satellites. But beyond navigation, the GPS satellite constellation provides a large range of positioning and uh, timing services for both civil and military purposes. Uh, due to a, a combination of spacecraft mass and orbit, we will not be attempting a first stage recovery today as we need to reserve enough fuel to get the payload to its intended orbit. Today's launch represents SpaceX's 21st launch and final launch for 2018. The launch window lasts 26 minutes and will close at 9.37 a.m. Eastern Time. And with just a little over uh, 12 minutes to go before launch, let's check in with Shiva to see what's happening on the pad. Thanks, Tom. My name is Shiva. I'm a Falcon integration test engineer here at SpaceX. And behind me is a live view of Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle. Now, Falcon 9 is over 70 meters tall, which is taller than a 21-story building. Now, the base of the vehicle, which is shrouded in some fog, is what we refer to as the first stage. It has nine Merlin engines at its base, which accelerate the entire vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to the edge of space. Now, as Tom mentioned earlier, today's target orbit does not permit a recovery attempt, making today's Falcon 9 a rare expendable version. So it doesn't have grid fins here at the top, and it doesn't have landing legs either. The first stage gets us to the edge of space, but it's the second stage above the first stage that will carry today's GPS-3 satellite to a medium Earth orbit, or MEO. About three minutes into the launch, the first stage engines will cut off, and the second stage will separate. Following stage separation, the second stage will fire its single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC engine, to bring it and the GPS-3 space vehicle to a highly elliptical transfer orbit. Now, as the rocket ascends, friction with the Earth's atmosphere generates tremendous pressure forces and heating. Our five meter diameter payload fairing, which is this two piece composite structure at the very tip of the rocket, protects today's satellite from these forces. In fact, because of the extra heating, we have a little bit of extra thermal protection at the very tip of the vehicle. Now, once we're in the vacuum of space, the fairing's mission is complete, and we'll jettison it back to Earth to reduce overall vehicle mass. We won't be attempting to recover today's fairing, as our fairing recovery vessel, Mr. Stephen, is currently on the west coast of the United States. Now, on the side of the rocket, this large gray truss structure is what we refer to as the transporter erector, or TE. Now, the TE rolls Falcon 9 out to the launch pad and raises it to the vertical launch position, while also providing power, launch fluids, and communication feeds to both the satellite and rocket just up until about T minus one minute, when Falcon 9 will switch over to its own internal control. Now, let's hear how launch preparations are going from Tom. We are now just under 10 minutes until liftoff. In the past several hours, uh, key steps have, been ta have taken place in order to get the rocket closer to its T minus zero liftoff. Uh, the pad was cleared at about T minus six hours before launch, and then 38 minutes before launch, the launch director pulled the team to determine readiness for propellant load, and then we did proceed to begin loading propellant and uh, fuel onto the vehicle. The GPS spacecraft finished transitioning to internal power at about T minus 15 minutes before launch. Falcon 9 uses a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 for its fuel and super chilled liquid oxygen, or LOX, as its oxidizer. To ignite the engines, Falcon 9 uses a chemical called TTEB, which stands for triethyl aluminum, triethyl borate, which you'll see at T0 via the telltale green spark right before the rocket takes off. Currently, RP-1 is nearly fully loaded on the first stage, and the second stage is fully fueled. Liquid oxygen loading is currently underway and will finish loading on the first and second stages at three and two minutes prior to launch, respectively. We've also began helium loading. Uh, helium gas acts as our pressurant to push RP-1 and LOX through the Merlin engines, and helium will continue to top off until a minute and a half before launch. 
engine chill began at about T minus seven minutes, or will begin at about T minus seven minutes of liftoff. Uh, this is where we open the valves between the first stage Merlin engines and the propellant tanks to allow just a small amount of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pumps to begin to bring down their temperature to avoid any shocks to the system when the full flow of locks begins flowing into those engines. At about T minus four and a half minutes, that white truss structure called the transporter erector, or TE, will retract away from the rocket just slightly to provide clearance for the Falcon 9 to lift off. Uh, looking at liftoff conditions, the range is currently green for launch. Uh, we monitor upper level winds, ground level winds, uh, cloud rules and lightning rules. It is a clear day at the Cape, uh, but right now we are monitoring those upper level winds, uh, but they are trending in a positive direction. However, if for any reason we cannot launch today, we do have a backup launch opportunity for tomorrow with the window opening at 9.07 a.m. Eastern Time. Hi, I'm Michael Andrews, and I'm a member of the supply chain team here at SpaceX. As Tom mentioned earlier, today we're launching the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 1 satellite for the U.S. Air Force. The Global Positioning System, commonly known as GPS, is a satellite-based global navigation array. It provides a remarkably diverse set of uses, from navigation to agriculture to search and rescue. The GPS project began back in 1973 for military uses and became widely available for the public in the 1990s. The last of the, the, last of the second series of GPS satellites, GPS-2, was launched back in 2016. Now this latest generation GPS-3 will introduce new capabilities such as three times improved accuracy, eight times improved anti-jamming capabilities, an extended 15-year service life, and increased coordination with other international global navigation systems. So as you heard of the nets, we did have a hold, 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 and the clock has stopped. Uh, right now, it looks like the Falcon 9 has uh, hit an abort condition. Uh, we don't have all the information just yet, but uh, hold on, and we will get uh, some more information as soon as the teams have had a chance to review the data and see what's up on the rocket. This is Launch Director and the Captain Net. We're scrubbed for today's operation as we've uh, run out of window. Please set up for a 24-hour recycle. We're in Section 58 for uh, post-scrub uh, turnaround.
For those of you just joining us, we did have an abort. Uh, you heard that hold, hold, hold call on the launch nets. Um, unfortunately, this abort was uh, it was triggered by the onboard uh, Falcon 9 flight computer. Uh, the unfortunate part is that it has pushed us past our launch window today. Uh, so it means that we will not be able to recycle the countdown and attempt again. So it looks like uh, we are going to be attempting to launch tomorrow. Uh, we have another window tomorrow at starting at 9.07 a.m. So uh, please tune in tomorrow for uh, the next attempt of the GPS-3 uh, uh, space vehicle satellite.